Hi, I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, aka the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN. And we're joined by everyone's favorite, the resident legal diva, former prosecutor, Melba Pearson. Welcome, Melba. Thank you, Dave. What's happening, Florida Lawman? Hey, well, you know what's happening? Uh, in Florida, we're all talking about Kentucky and that case of the sheriff. And not bourbon. We're talking about oh. the case. Well, yeah. Well, the sheriff who shot the judge, they were friends. They were having lunch earlier that day with a group of people. And then they were in the chambers where the judge actually had the hidden camera in the chamber. So we watched this awful killing take place. And, you know, on our channel, people are mixed about it. They say some people say, well, the judge deserves it because there is a rumor that the judge was somehow involved with the sheriff's underage daughter. There is no proof of that, by the way, no evidence that yet we are going to be continuing to follow this matter. Uh, but people, I think, are jumping the gun on that. Other people are saying this was disgusting and terrible. The sheriff, who obviously had a screw loose and, and just lost it and shot the sh shot the judge. So people are you know wanting to know more. And the authorities over there in Kentucky, rural community, have been really tight-lipped about it. Well, uh, according to the Courier-Journal, which is the newspaper of record over there, uh, it says that the matter is now in the hands of a grand jury for a potential indictment. So all that evidence will go before a grand jury, which is in secret. So we won't know more yet until I think the charges are filed. I, there will be charges filed, whether it will be murder, or manslaughter, or whatnot. We're going to know more soon enough. Initial thoughts about this case, Melba. What do you think? Yeah, very, as with all of these cases, very disturbing. Um, I see second degree murder charges happening end up. I, I don't see manslaughter. I don't see necessarily premeditation just from the way, the sequence of events, right? Like you're having lunch, you're fine earlier in the day. There didn't seem to be any animosity between the two leading up to, at least from what's publicly available, leading up to the time of the homicide. So that clearly was, they had an argument, something went, terribly left and and then you know the homicide resulted so i definitely see a second degree murder happening it does strike me as something very personal and it sounds almost like a revelation so i thought initially that maybe it was you know like a partner situation where you know one partner was cheating with the other something like that i thought it was like a love triangle type situation um, I hope, I hope it has nothing to do with an underage child because that's a whole nother level of just horror because you think about the child and what they went through and now what they may be feeling, guilt, confusion. So, you know, I'm very worried about if that is accurate, the mental health of that survivor. So there's that aspect. Yeah. But, you know, we just don't know, but we have the basics, right? He went in, he shot him, he's dead. So well, we also well, we also uh, know that according to reports, the sheriff was looking at both cell phones, his and the judges. He calls, according to reports, the sheriff calls his daughter. The daughter doesn't pick up. Then he calls the daughter on the judge's cell phone, and the phone number pops right up, like the name pops right up. So the According to reports, the daughter's name and information was in the judge's phone. Now, I've seen reports that said that the daughter picked up when the call was supposedly from the judge. I don't have confirmation on that, but this is what makes people think there was something more here. But even if that were the case, we don't know if there was, a, there was an untoward relationship with the daughter because when the sheriff was arrested, he was talking about some kidnapping plot and it, had, it would have nothing to do with a child molestation case. So then you're thinking, is something in the sheriff's mind that he thought that the judge was involved with taking uh, the, his child and wife away from him? It's so confusing. Uh, we just don't know yet. And that's the thing. I try to caution people before we jump to conclusions. We're all waiting for any word to come from authorities and we haven't received it yet. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's tough when you're kind of operating in a vacuum because as human beings, we all want to know why, right? We, we want to understand the motive. We don't have to prove motive as prosecutors, but it helps explain the chain of events. Now, again, this is a situation where it's straightforward and the prosecution doesn't have to argue motive. 
really? Because you're going to say, listen, the sheriff walked in, he fired a gun, he killed the judge, and there's video footage of that, and he basically confesses to it, end up open and shut. So it's one of those situations where we may never know what happened, right? Oh, I just... Well, I think, I mean, they've interviewed the daughter. I would think that they're going to know what the sheriff was thinking. His own lawyer said that this shooting occurred in the heat of passion. And the lawyer said he believes that the highest level of culpability should be manslaughter based on the partial defense of extreme emotional disturbance. So they're setting up a defense that he saw something, it, he, he went off the handle, shot, and so at the worst, it should be manslaughter, and they're hoping for jury nullification to get sympathy for this sheriff. But uh, I, I do think that they're going to know by the time of trial, we'll all know what was going on here, and the jury is going to be asked to put themselves in the shoes of the sheriff. But I'm with you. You don't get to take matters in your own hands, even if you saw something that was this terrible. I think you should still be found guilty of something like manslaughter because you don't get to be a vigilante and shoot people. You go to the police and you tell uh, what happened and you get this person arrested and stand justice. Vigilante justice is not true justice in my mind. Absolutely. And you're the sheriff, so you know better. It, it is not like you're somebody who's not adept, doesn't know the laws, and is just like, this is the only way I can defend my family. Like, you're literally the head law enforcement officer of that particular jurisdiction. So you know better. And when I say that we may never fully know, you know, my my question will be if the if this truly is involving a young person, how honest are they going to be? And I don't mean this to, to besmirch the, the the young child. I'm not you know saying that at all. But sometimes when children get, and you know this, Dave, when children get caught in these types of situations, they may minimize the full scope of what happened, or they may leave out certain details, not realizing that is significant. So hopefully, if this is really tied to this young child, there is mental health therapists and all that working with them to get full disclosure and understand the full scope of what happened versus the bits and pieces. Because again, if it was truly that the judge was having an inappropriate relationship with this young person, they may still have feelings towards them and not want to get them in trouble or anything like that and may leave out critical details. So that's why I'm just, you know, I'm just very cautious in terms of what we're all going to fully find out by the time this is all over. But I agree with you. I think that he needs to be convicted of something. I still think second degree murder because the heat of passion is, is accounted for in second degree murder as well. And based on his position, he knew better. So that's my biggest thing. He knew better. Right. And although everyone's innocent until proven guilty, we have video. We saw it all where you have an unarmed man cowering under his desk. That's the judge as the sheriff shoots him and then walks around and makes sure he shoots him again and kills him. And then on his way out, he apparently looks at the phone again. But uh, it's very clear when you watch the video that you can see him shoot the judge multiple times and make sure that, you know, he shoots him even as the judge poses no threat to him at that time. So, uh, I, you know, you can say that uh, innocent until proven guilty, correct. But at the same time, we see the video. That's why I think you're right to say that I think he should be convicted of something. I just think, don't think you can allow this to go on in civilized society to have, yeah, you see somebody you don't like, go ahead and shoot the person. You're armed, he's not, he's not a threat to you, go ahead and kill the person. No, that's not the, the rule of law. The rule of law is you stand trial, but here the judge won't be standing trial. The only person standing trial will be the sheriff. Last words, Melba, goes to you, resident legal diva. Well, always, again, centering the survivor of this, if there is a survivor, if there truly is a, a young person that was victimized, because remember, young people can't consent. So if that's truly the case, my heart goes out to that young person and their family, and hopefully, you know, they get the support that they need. Yeah. Hey, I, I hope that the rumors are not true. But if they are, obviously, we're going to take the side of the victim here, and that victim would be the underage child. But, of course, we don't have any proof yet. So we're going to hold off on our judgments until we find out more. Uh, this is the latest episode of True Crime MTN, and we're going to keep following this matter throughout. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman. That is Melba Pearson, the resident legal diva. Melba, please tell our audience where they can find you. 
You can find me on all socials at resident underscore legal underscore diva, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. <laughs> I'm all around. So hit me up. Love to hear from folks and see you soon. The ubiquitous Melba Pearson. Thank you for watching True Crime MTN. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and leave a comment below. We love reading your comments, even when you disagree with us. And we'll see you next time.